It is. Scott Sharks, check that. Sharks. Sharks with the foul. The second on the back. And here's a very fifth man for the line. Jerry's averaging 19 points for ball game, so he's no slouch in the stand. Fisher's first attempt is good. Makes it a 9 5 ball game. Fisher's the second shot coming. It's off the rim. Rebounded by O'Mara for the Vikings. Bill Barker has it now up the floor. Barker over to shots. Left side down low now to oh, uh, Schellenberger. Schellenberger up top now to Ryan Hazel. Hazel on the right side. Down over to Schutz. Just pat back up to Hazel. And over and back will be charged against the Lakewood Vikings. Bill Barker attempted to save it, but stepped over the line. It'll be an Oriole ball on the side. Have it in play. The Coon back now to McConnell. McConnell on top. And we're going to have a foul called against Ryan Hazel. That'll be his second. Team third. And going to the line will be Steve Ernst for Charlotte. Check that. Ball out on the end. Oh, the Orioles have it. They put a shot up. Winsher puts a shot up. It's no good, but a foul will be called. Fouls on Sean O'Mara. His first. Team fourth. Following the act of shooting. We'll send Vishu to the line. His team trailing by a 9 to 5 count. The shot up, it's good. Well, his dad is the athletic director, Gene Vischer, former head coach at uh, Charlotte High School. And his father, Gene, played for Dick Mata, the NBA coach, when Dick was the coach at Weber State. Vischer's uh, second attempt is in and out. Scramble underneath for the rebound, goes out of bounds. Charlotte basketball on the end. After coaching the Charlotte High School basketball team, Gene, v- Gene Vischer, I believe, went out to Wyoming and was an assistant coach for the uh, Cowboys for a while, and then he returned to Charlotte. Athletic director now. The Vikings have the basketball now. Ryan Hazel up the right side of the lane for the Lakewood Vikings. Hazel tries to get a pass back, and he does to Barker. Well, this is one of the most intense basketball games I've seen in a long time in the early game. These players are really out for blood tonight. They're scrapping. Marker will be going to the free throw line. He'll be shooting one and one. Marker eyes the hoop. The shot's up. It's good. So Bill has uh, four points so far in the game. The Vikings have a 10 to 6 lead here in the first period. Marks the second shot. He has the hoop. The shot's up, and it's good. Seven to six, our score. The Orioles with the basketball. The ball knocked out of bounds by Lakewood. The Orioles will have it out on the side. Spoon feeds it in to Ernst. Ernst takes it around, puts it up to the free throw line. It's off. Rebound knocked out by Lakewood. It'll be a short score. Is everything? So the Lakewood Vikings have done a good job holding them in check. The shot put up by Coon is good for his first two points of the ball game. That's the lead to eliminate. Pass taken away by the Orioles. And a foul to charge against Kevin Schellenberger. Well, Mace uh, was very much concerned about their Charlotte press. The press is something that they do very effectively. And he was worried about the Lakewood Vikings coping with that press. He felt the Vikings, if the Vikings can handle it, uh, they're going to be in this ball game tonight. But that time it bothered him. Going to the line is Scott McConnell for the Charlotte Orioles. He'll get two here. McConnell's first one is good. He can bring the Orioles to within one point. He connects on this one here. 
We're exactly halfway through the first period. Four minutes exactly on the clock. Second shot is also good for McConnell. That makes it 11 to 10 here in the first period. Lakewood with a basketball now and the lead. Marker has it. Gets it across the half-court line to Ryan Hazel. Cross-court pass to Schutz now on the left side of the lane. Back to Barker. Back to Schutz. Schutz back to Barker now. Barker down low to Schellenberger. Schellenberger tries to take it underneath but can't make it. Back out top to Barker. Barker finds Schutz on the left side of the lane. Schutz gets it down low to Schellenberger. Good for two points. 13 to 10 the score here in the first period. Lakewood with the lead. Orioles with the basketball. 3.22 to go. The Orioles have it down on their end of the court. Shot attempted by McConnell is rejected by Ryan Hazel. And a foul. When they contact, it looked like a good block at a lot of the folks here, but he did make that body contact. The, the foul was charged against 44, uh, Scott Schutz. Oh, Schutz got the foul. Schutz got the hand in there. I thought maybe Ryan Hazel was a, a little bit too short to reject that, but he looked like he was close, I thought. At the line, number 24, McConnell, good for two points, or one point. You don't get two off the free throw line. Well, I shut out Ernst, but McConnell's uh, been deadly so far. Second shot is off the rim, no good. Rebounded by O'Mara. O'Mara to Barker now. Bill Barker has it for the Lakewood Vikings. Over to Schutz. Down low now to Schellenberger. Schellenberger under a lot of pressure. Passes way out top to Hazel. And Hazel is fouled by Wilbur. Mark Wilbur for the Charlotte Orioles. That'll be his second. And that will send uh, Ryan Hazel to the charity strike. Hazel is at the line. He eyes the hoop. The shot's up. And it's good. So Hazel gets his first points tonight. Gives the Vikings a 14 to 11 lead. Hazel's second shot is on the way. This one is no good. Rebounded by Hazel. Ryan Hazel gets his own rebound on the left side of the lane now. Down low to Schellenberger underneath. Schellenberger works it out, puts the shot up. No good. Rebounded by the Orioles. The Orioles come on the floor. McConnell has the basketball. Passes back to Ernst. Ernst takes it down the right side. Down low. Shot put up by Wilbur. is good for two points. 14-13 basketball game. The Lakewood Vikings have the lead in the basketball. Barker comes down, drives it down the lane. And the pass is taken away by the Orioles. They come back right down the floor with it. Ernst from the left side. Right side, check, rejected. Vikings still up with the rebound. Back up the floor. Shot O'Mara has it on the left side of the Lakewood lane. Back out top now to Bill Barker. Bill Barker trying to set things up. A little over two minutes to go here in the first period. Underneath is Sean O'Mara. Sean turns around, put the shot up in and out. Rebounded by the Orioles. The Orioles have the basketball. Steve Ernst down low. Put it by Fisher. We'll check it. And a foul will be called against Lakewood. Number 24, Kevin Schellenberger. Uh, the second foul on Kevin Schellenberger. Evidently, was fouled before the uh, he got the shout off ball, so one and one. One and one situation sends Jerry Vischer to the charity stripe. Vischer's shot is up, and it's, no, it's good. And that ties the score at 14. Scott Schutz comes up, Scott Eastep goes in for the Lakewood Vikings. Fisher can put his team in front for the first time in the ball game. He eyes the hoop, the shot's up, and it's good. So Charlotte has their first lead in the game, 15 to 14. The Vikings have the basketball, a minute 55 to go. Scotty step on the left side. Back on top to Barker. Barker over now to Hazel on the right side. Hazel looking for some help. Tries to get a pass in the lane to O'Hara, taken away by Charlotte. 
we've got a scramble, and the Orioles come up with it. They have the basketball. McConnell puts it up on the left side. Off the rim. Rebounded by Billy Barker. Billy Barker on across the half court line. Passes down to East Step underneath. East Step puts it up. Two points for Scott East Step. 16 to 15 to score. Lakewood with the basketball, or uh, with the lead in the basketball game. The Orioles with the basketball. With a minute 15 to go in the first period. Ernst underneath. Hands off to number 34. Fisher. Shots no good. Rebound by O'Mara. O'Mara to Barker. Barker up the floor. Barker takes it right down the lane. And a shot put up from the right side by East. That's no good. Rebounded. Orioles. Ernst goes back up the floor with it now. Puts it up from the charity strike. It's good. And that is Steve Burke's first points of the night. 17 to 16 to score. Orioles with the lead. The Vikings with the ball. Barker on the left side of the lane. Barker takes it in the lane. Puts a layup. Two points. And a charging foul. No good. The basket is no good. So Barker picks up the foul and no points. It'll be an Oriole basketball out on the side. Coming into the ball game now for sure a lot is number 20. That is Mike Rodiger. Rodiger replaces uh, Steve Ernst. The Orioles have the basketball. 31 seconds to go here in the first first quarter. McDonald puts a shot up. It's no good. Underneath the basket by Mark Wilbur. Fouled, and he, uh, he, is, he collects two points. Schellenbarger will be going to the line to shoot one. Fouls on Jerry Fisher. Schellenbarger can tie or score up again, and he does not. Orioles with a basketball. Ten seconds to go in the first period. And we're going to have a traveling violation called against the Orioles. Vikings will have the basketball on the end with eight seconds to go in the first period. On the side, actually. Check that. Ryan Hazel. Full court pressure from the Orioles. Schellenbarger takes it in off the left side in and out rebounded Schellenbarger he puts it up two points we've got some more activity on the floor more discussions between Kevin Schellenbarger and McConnell It's like Schellenbarger's going to go to the Kevin, line. Kevin Schellenbarger is going to go to the uh, free throw line. As we have another foul called against Charlotte. Technical in nature, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either, Paul, but uh, the intensity uh, in this ball game is just absolutely unbelievable. Not only out on the floor, but for the fans in the stands. Schellenbarger has what? He's almost in double figures, isn't he? Paul? He's got 10 points, according to my totals. And that is the way we're going to end the first period with the score. Lakewood, 21. Charlotte, 19. We'll be back with an exciting second quarter for you right after this. This is Lakewood Viking Basketball. Lakewood High School Gymnasium, second quarter action. The Vikings lead Charlotte, 21 to 19. That score raising quite a few eyebrows right now. Charlotte, the favorite ball club, one of the top teams in the state, if you believe the reins, and Ernst drives, puts a shot on misses, and going high for the rebound to Schellenbarger, who has 10 points in the ball game. over to Hazel, Hazel, back out in front now to Billy Barker, Billy Barker just holds that ball up, he's been at the free throw line a lot, and Schellenbarger takes the shot from the lane and misses it on the rebound, we have a foul call, it might be against East Step, we'll get a confirmation on that. Orioles will get a free throw attempt here, and it is against each step. That's his first personal foul. Scott Eastep picking up the personal foul. The Charlotte Orioles go to the line, and it's Jim Kuhn, a stocky lad, six foot one. He's a forward. He has two points to his credit in the ball game. Ernst 
Their outstanding score averaging 24.8 points a ball game has been held to just two. The free throw is up and rolls around and misses and going up for the boards is O'Mara. O'Mara, he step has it on still accepted by Sherlock. Over to O'Connell, the O'Connell shoots and scores. Stad McConnell picks up his eighth and ninth points. It's 21 all. First now by the slot Orioles. Let's see if the Vikings can beat it as Billy Barker fires a pass down the sidelines. Over to O'Mara. O'Mara drives the lane, puts a shot up in and out. Tap up underneath. Whitey step is good. He has four. Vikings back on top, 23 to 21. Ernst driving the lane, puts a shot up from 15. And this is a tap up underneath. Fails to connect. Rebound taken off by O'Mara. It's going to Hazel now. Ryan Hazel wrapped the middle behind the back pass, driving in from the side as he step doesn't score, but the whistle goes. Paul is the Vikings. That's three on Ryan Hazel. Ryan Hazel with one point has his third personal foul. And it looks like number 42, Jim Coon, who missed his last free throw opportunity, is going up for the charity strike. Shoots back in the ballgame for the Lakewood Vikings. Mark Wilber uh, coming out for Sherlock and uh, Jeff Richards reporting in. The Vikings call a timeout as we've got a barn burner going here at the Vikings lead 23 to uh, 21. And you would think that this uh, ballgame is for a Hall of Marbles as far as the Capitol Circuit is concerned, and we're back. We're on hand early in March or, or late in Mar- early in March or late April. A good crowd on hand tonight. Not only is this an outstanding Tuesday night crowd, but Paul, this has to rank as one of the better crowds, uh, period, in the last few years, I would say, since the, uh, the Jeff Heidi era. This has to rank as one of the better crowds here at Lakewood uh, High School Gymnasium. The fans really up for this ball game tonight. The Slot Orioles bringing one of the better contingents. As far as the visiting team is concerned that we've seen in, uh, in recent uh, years here tonight. And there seems to be uh, a little bit of animosity out on the court. The tempers have flared in this ball game so far. An amazing statistic. Steve Ernst, one of the top guards in the state of Michigan, is uh, held to two points. He's averaging 28. But he'll probably meet up before this one is over with. Lakewood uh, JVs came through with a uh, thrilling win uh, tonight, too, 68 to 64. Paul, they pulled that one out of the fire in the last couple of minutes. And that set the stage for this one. The fans got keyed up with a JV ball game, and it's carried right over to the varsity encounter. The free throw is up in the floor. So Jim Kuhn has his third point of the ball game, and that makes it 23 to 22, Lakewood on top. Next free throw ties it up, 23 all, 6.52 to go in the second quarter. Capital Circuit action, Lakewood High School Gymnasium, the Vikings 1-1 one one in the Capital Circuit, Sherlock, they are 1-0. Oh. They now count the wet in league play. Shoots over on the right side, feeds underneath the layup by O'Mara, curls around, misses. Barker in the lane, puts up the one-hander, cams it. Billy Barker on an excellent uh, follow-up, he has uh, about seven. And now the Vikings are pressing. There's Schultz is applying the pressure, but Sherlock's going to beat it. Bisher has it. He's at the Sherlock end of the court now with Ernst holding the ball up above his head with left-handed dribble. Goes to the side. Over to McConnell in the wing position. Drops the tire for the the top of the key. Flips it over the right side. The shot put up by Ernst. Hits the look of the rim. Bounce away. The rebound taken off by Schultz. Over to Billy Barker who quarterbacks the ball up the middle. Left side to Schultz. Schultz holding the ball up. Takes the jumper from 15. Bounce high and rattles to it. That's this first two. Scott Chuck's getting the basket. 27 to 23. A four-point vote. And McConnell comes back and answers it with a jumper and a foul call. Good from the right wing slot. That makes it now 27 to 25. And Scott McConnell was fouled. Scott has nine points. What has he got, Paul? I had him down for round nine. Maybe he's going to double figure. The panel has 11 now. 
Missed that one, the free throw, and the Vikings get the rebound as O'Mara got the round ball, flipped it off to Schutz. Over to Barker. Barker almost loses it. Back over to Schutz, who drives. The feet underneath, right in the hands of this year. Flips it out to Ernst. Ernst up the pumps from 18. Rolls around, doesn't go, and going for the boards is Schutz. Back over to Barker. Barker up the left side of the floor, stops. Bounce pass from the left side to Scott Eastip. Back out to Barker. Barker, cross pass to O'Mara. Fadeaway jumper, good. John O'Mara has uh, five. It's 29 to 25, the Lakewood Vikings. Hanging right in there, leading in this ball game. And Ernst takes the jumper and a foul call against the Orioles. The Lakewood Vikings taking it to the favorite Charlotte Orioles, 49 to 25, 459 to go in the second quarter. It's uh, Eastep feeding it in. It's a turnover against Charlotte, not a foul, as Eastep works it into Billy Barker, the outstanding Lakewood Viking halfback. Now to Eastep, underneath to Schellenbarker. The shoot to score. Set scores, a beautiful shot. Left baseline, and here comes Ernst, quickly up the left side. Ernst spins around, stops, takes the shot, off the glass in here. Beautiful move by Steve Ernst. Just his fourth point, 31 to 27. We're down to the 428 mark. Dylan Barker quietly brings the ball up. Bounce pass, left wing position, east step over to Schellenberg in the lane. Whoops, one up and in. He has 12 points. He's averaging 11. And it's Ernst. He comes back, puts it up off the glass. It misses. O'Mara goes up to the rebound. We have uh, some banging around underneath the hook. And a foul called against Sherlock. Lakewood going to the free throw line. Jerry Fisher charged with his second. What a ball game so far. Uh, fans getting more than their money's worth. We hope that you're enjoying the broadcast out there. Lakewood Viking basketball at its best, and Paul, this is such a, an improved uh, Lakewood team over uh, last year from what we've seen so far this season. Shots at the line, free throws up, this is a rebound taken off by Wilbur, up the floor. The Orioles on the attack with Ernst going to the top of the key, and he has it picked off for the foul call against Billy Barker. That'll be Billy's second. So that's going to put uh, Ernst to the line. 33 to 27, the Vikings on top, 402 left to go in the second quarter. And this is Billy Barker. First, his free throw is uh, right on the money. He's got five points. Mike Rodiker reports into the lineup. For the Orioles is Ernst. Can't the next one. He has uh, six points. Well, he's on his way reaching double figures, and Paul, I wouldn't be surprised if he wound up with uh, more than 20 points in this ballgame, although he's been held pretty much in check in the first half. A high feed to O'Mara, left baseline, couldn't find a handle on it, and he loses it out of bounds. East end of the court, right where the Lakewood Vikings have their name embedded in the hardwood and white lettering. Been a lot of fine refurbishing of the court here as Ernst gets the shot up, hits the front of the rim. Barker with the rebound, comes up the court very quickly. Almost had it picked off. Gets it off on the right side to East Step High Feed. Underneath to Shellen Barker. This is the battle for the rebound. The Orioles win it, but they throw it out. Gunzer uh, got the rebound and he threw it out of bounds. Vikings are going to take it back here. In front of the Charlotte cheerleaders. Schellenbarger high feet into O'Mara, and we have uh, a foul in the lane here, evidently against Jim Coo. Well, they call it against Wolver. So Sean O'Mara is at the free throw line. He has five points, so he's been held pretty much in check, averaging 22 this season. Free throws good. So Sean 
Picks up his uh, sixth point of the night. He's got another one coming. Jeff Richards back in for Charlotte. He's under for the rebound. The free throw is up, and it's good by Sean O'Mara. He has seven points. Ernst has the basketball at 35 to 29. The Vikings trying to hold that lead. Run the locker room at intermission. That would give them a big morale lift. And a three-second lane violation called against Charlotte. They made a lot of mistakes. The longer the Vikings uh, hold their position, which is a leading one right now, the more confidence they're going to have as far as this ball game is concerned. And Bill Barker, guarded closely by Fisher, Barker trying to get across that line, uh, gets the pass off to uh, O'Mara, but O'Mara loses it out. The pressure by Sherlock as they press bother the Lakewood Vikings. Ernst to McConnell. Right side, the pump put up. Rolls around, doesn't go. Rebound picked off here by Billy Walker. Walker with the ball. Up the floor, and uh, almost a jam by Eastep. It's in. Eastep has played great basketball coming off the bench. He has six points. 37 to 29. The Vikings with their biggest lead tonight. Eight points. 37 to 29. McConnell over the right side. McConnell takes the shot. Top of the circle. He has 13. 37 to 31. We're down to 230. Bill Barker with the basketball. High toss and uh, taken all the way by Charlotte. Bad toss intended for O'Mara. He was defended by two Orioles and they picked it off. And it's this year out on the left side. Out in front now to McConnell to Ernst. Gunson from way out. This is Stein for the rebound and shoots. It goes over to Billy Barker. He comes up the floor, stops, holds it up. He's between the rings right now. Porter shuts to the right side. The youngster from Arizona gets it back out to Barker. Barker, left side, top of the circle. Beats into Schellenbarger. Right side and uh, looks As he drove in from the left side, he traveled. And the Orioles take it out, 37 to 31. 154 to go in the second stand. So before a uh, fine crowd here at the Lakewood High School Gymnasium. McConnell now gets it back out to Ernst. Ernst watched by Billy Barker. Back out to McConnell. McConnell pumps and tears it. He's been hot. He's got 15. So while Ernst has been held in check, his partner guard McConnell has sizzled, sizzled here in the first uh, half. A bad pass for the Vikings as they're making some drastic turnovers right now. And Charlotte down by eight and cut the gap to two this trip down the floor. It turns across the blue L at center court over on the right side. Cocoon back out in front out of McConnell. McConnell goes to Ernst, puts the shot up under some pressure. It fails, and Ernst gets the rebound over on the left side. Back to McConnell, stops, goes around, puts pumps it in. His 17th Viking lead cut to two. A steal and a foul call against the Viking eight point lead. 37 to 29 has now been cut. 37 to 35 as Charlotte has come back with six unanswered points. And Billy Barker has been to the free throw tonight a lot. He's up the line with some pressure free throws. They're going to be all pressure free throws the way this ball game is going. One and one, Billy Barker at the charity strike. He puts it over. Billy with eight. East step back uh, defending near the Shalott basket. Try to take away a key basket by the Orioles. And Barker calmly puts in the second one. He has nine points. 39 to 35. We're down under a minute. Ernst drives to the right. Gives it out to Kuhn, who takes the jumper. Doesn't go. And a foul on the rebound as Schutz went up for the rebound, and he was fouled. So Schutz at the line. He has four points. So Schutz 
sets at the line. Free throw is up on the middle. He has five. Schutz has his uh, fifth point of the ball game. 40 to 35 now, the Vikings on top. 41 to 35. As he has six points, and it's Ernst. Across the line. He only has six points so far. Over the right side, the shot put up. It rattles right in there. Beautiful shot by Rodecker. That makes it 41 to 37. To O'Mara, the shots. Bad pass, but the Lakewood's going to keep the basketball. Billy Barker with 23 seconds left. 41 to 37. We're in the second quarter. The Chutz takes the shot. Air ball. Vikings save it. Jim will save by Schellenbarger over to O'Mara. Takes a shot under some pressure. Hits the iron. Follow up underneath by Schellenbarger. Rolls it in. 14 points for Schellenbarger. Ernst comes down and he cans it at the buzzer. Eight points for Ernst and what a first half. It's 43 to 37 in favor of the uh, 43 to 39 in favor of the Lakewood Vikings at the uh, end of the first uh, half here. Paul, what was the talent of the first quarter? Do you have that one? Uh, Lakewood 21, Charlotte 19. A superb ball game here from the Lakewood High School Gymnasium between these two longtime rivals. They played a lot of uh, ball games back in the West Central Conference. And that went down under uh, back around the middle 1970s. Lakewood Vikings going to the Tri River and the uh, Charlotte Orioles. In the Capital Circuit. And uh, these two ball clubs tonight have played one of the most intense high school basketball games that we've seen in a very, very long time. Well, the very first Lakewood high school basketball game occurred back on November the 29th, 1963. And uh, between the Lakewood Vikings and the Charlotte Orioles, Gordon Garlock uh, passes this along to us. And he wrote a note to me I thought you might like to have the... Uh, this, it's an article about that basketball game, and Gordon writes the headline was uh, Lakewood trips to Charlotte in first uh, cage start. And he mentions that his dad uh, found the clippings in a cardboard box recently, and Gordon seems to think that his brother must have uh, saved that particular uh, clipping. Uh, Gordon does mention that the game was played on November the 29th, 1963, one w week exactly after the assassin assassination of President John F. Kennedy, and he gave the original clipping to uh, Randy Hewitt, who was the star of that basketball game in 1963, November 29th. And in that ball game, Randy Hewitt pumped in a record-breaking 41 points for the Lakewood Vikings. The Vikings won that one against the Orioles, 81 to 54. And the 41 score, points scored by Randy Hewitt uh, stood as a Lakewood Viking record, if my memory serves me right, until uh, February 1980, when Larry Lubitz pumped in 42 up at Greenville against the Greenville Yellow Jackets on the very same night. The United States Olympic hockey team upset the Russians out in uh, New York at Lake Placid. And they made the announcement of that final score between the USA and the Soviet Union. And, uh, boy, they just went absolutely bananas up at Greenville. And that was followed up by that outstanding performance by Larry Lubitz. And then in several months later, December the 7th, 1980, here at the Lakewood High School Gymnasium, Jeff Heide broke the Lakewood Viking uh, record, eclipsed Lubitz's mark. When he canned a total of 47 points against the Fremont Packers, he had 10 at halftime, was spent a lot of time out of that first half in the locker room having a uh, lacerated chin taken care of. Jeff Heide came out on the floor in the second half and canned a uh, scintillating 37 points to wind up with uh, 47. So Randy Hewitt, the original record breaker for the Lakewood Vikings in the very first Lakewood Viking basketball game back on November the 29th, 1963, against the Shalot Orioles. Larry Lubitz breaking at February 1980. Jeff Heide setting the all-time Lakewood Viking mark of 47 on December the 7th, 1980. Paul, what do you have as far as some uh, statistics are concerned? All right. Uh, 
night, Dave. Let's look at the numbers uh, in tonight's ball game. First of all, for the sh visiting Charlotte Orioles, the Orioles are being led by Scott McDonald, who has 17 points in the ball game tonight. He's followed by Steve Ernst, who has eight points. Four points apiece from Jerry Fisher, Jim Kuhn, and Mark Wilbur, and two points from Mike Rodiger tonight for the Orioles. Lakewood Vikings are being led by Kevin Schellenbarger, who has a total of 14 points in the ballgame tonight so far. Bill Barker has nine. Sean O'Mara has seven. Scott Schutz has six. And Ryan Hazel has one point. And a very fine ball game playing so far off the bench for Scott Eastep. He has six points in the contest. And some pretty good rebounds, too, from Scott tonight. Our score here at the halftime is Lakewood 43. And Charlotte, 39, will be back with more right after this. This is Lakewood Viking Basketball. The Lakewood Vikings are on the air. Good evening, basketball. here at Lakewood High School for the second half of tonight's ball game between the Lakewood Vikings and Charlotte Orioles. At the half, the score is Lakewood 43 and Charlotte uh, 39. Just had the stats as far as scoring from the first half, checking the numbers as far as the fouls go. Charlotte has three players in what you'd call foul trouble. Three apiece on Mark Wilbur, Jim Kuhn, and Scott McConnell. All starters for the Orioles. For the Lakewood Vikings tonight, one player in a bit of trouble, and that is Ryan Hazel. He has three fouls in the first half of tonight's ball game. Just about ready to begin the second half of this Capital Circuit League contest tonight from Lakewood High School. As on the alternate possession rule, out on the side. Looks like the Lakewood Vikings will begin with the ball here in the second half. Dave, I was checking our stats from the first half, and there was four lead changes in the first half of tonight's ball game. That's a lot for just one period of basket or one half of basketball. Well, the Lakewood Vikings uh, dumped in 24 points in the second quarter, and that's uh, excellent for a high school basketball team. Second half is underway. The Vikings have the basketball now, working right to left on your radio dial. Scott Schutz with another left side of Lakewood Lane. Out top to Ryan Hazel. Hazel, the, uh, again, the uh, Lakewood player in a bit of foul trouble. He has three. Shot put up from outside by Schutz. is good for two to begin the second half. Lakewood Lake went up to a 45-39 count. Orioles with the basketball. Ernst has it for the O's underneath. The shot put up by 52. No good. Rebounded by Sean O'Mara. Shot was put up by Mark Wilbur. Vikings come up the floor with it now. Sean O'Mara over to Schutz. Schutz back out top to Barker. Barker back to Schutz. Schutz looks around, finds O'Mara in the lane, puts it up. No good. Schellenberger at 18 puts it off the ground. Two points. Schellenberger now up to 16 points. The Vikings up to an eight-point lead in the contest. And I believe, Paul, the Vikings feel right now they can win this ball game. As long as they've got that feeling, they're going to play with this continued confidence and play good second half of basketball here. The foul's called against Lakewood. Scott Schutz is third, so now Schutz in a little bit of foul trouble. The Orioles will have the basketball out on the end. Shot put up by Orioles, no good. Working underneath, looking for a rebound. And we have a foul called against Lakewood. It looks like Schutz again. With a look of disgust on his face. And it is. So Scott Schutz will get a little rest here. Well, Scott Eastep is in for him. Scott played uh, very well in the first half. Shot put up by the Orioles. Rebounded by Sean O'Mara. O'Mara over to Barker. Barker comes up the floor casually. No pressure from the Orioles that time up the floor. Ryan Hazel has the basketball, the right side of the lane. And Schellenbarger, he puts it up. And the Vikes go up by 10, 49 to 39. And we've got a long way to 
go, but if the Vikings can uh, win this one, this would rank as one of the biggest upsets in Lakewood Viking history. Vikings have come out here to a 10-point lead now in the third quarter, and they have scored six unanswered points, and uh, a timeout was called to try and regroup. And we'll be back with more third quarter action from Lakewood High School. This is Lakewood Viking Basketball. Nothing wrong with your radio. We are coming to you in stereo tonight. I'm in your right speaker and Dave is in your left. <laughs> kind of a fun situation. It's fun being in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Back to action on the floor. Orioles with the basketball. Put up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by the Vikings. Ryan Hazel has it for Lakewood. Hazel under pressure. Brings it up floor across the half-court line. Down to O'Meara. O'Meara looks for help. Finds Barker out top. Billy Barker. Pressure from Ernst. He gets it in now to Hazel. Puts it up in the long range. It's no good. Rebounded by the Orioles. McConnell has it to Ernst. Ernst up the floor. Ernst puts one up from 18. It's off the rim. No good. Rebounded by the Orioles. Got put up by Wilbur from underneath. It's good for two points. And the Orioles now have their first points in the second half. 49 to 41. Lakewood with a lead and the basketball. 5.32 to go in the third quarter. Schellenberger has it on the right side. Cross court to Eastep. Puts it up. Two points. He's got eight coming off the bench. That's a key for the Vikings. Ten points spread. The Vikings with the lead. The Orioles with a basketball. The Vikings playing with confidence that I haven't seen them play with for a long time. And a traveling call against uh, Ernst. So uh, things just not going right for the Orioles. In action, Schellenberger with the basket, puts a shot up, it's no good, rebounded by the Orioles, Ernst has it, comes down the floor hard, and a foul called against Schellenberger, that'll be the third against Kevin, and that's not good news. Yeah, Schellenberger has Paul uh, 19 points, I think, in the ball game. so yeah, he does have to watch you, so he's been the key as far as the Vikings are concerned in this ball game. Taken away on the inbounds by Lakewood. They gave it right to Schellenberger on the inbound pass. Eastep's got to save it from going out. Eastep saves it to Barker. He puts the shot up. It's short. Rebounded by the Orioles. On the floor. Pass is taken away by Scott Eastep. Duran Hazel. And it's going to be Lakewood basketball on the side as it went out off the foot of uh, Steve Ernst. Fast and furious action here tonight. This Capital Circuit League game between the Lakewood Vikings and the Charlotte Orioles. Vikings with the ball in play. Barker has it. Tries to get a cross court pass to Hazel. It's taken away by Orioles. Steve Ernst on the left side. Turns around. Puts it up. No good. Rebounded by the O's. Rejected by Sean O'Mara. The play went behind the pool and I didn't see it. Orioles have it out on the side. It's in play now. Shot put up. Ernst. And Ernst has collected his 10th point of the ball game. But well, to be honest with you, Dave, I didn't see that play as I was marking my scorebook. It looks apparently as the pass was uh, taken it's away O'Meara. by the Orioles. Uh, O'Meara, uh, O'Meara it went off his fingertips out of bounds at the pass to O'Meara. The Orioles have the basketball. Steve Ernst with it on the right side of the lane. Cross court over to McConnell. McConnell puts it up off the rim. No good. Rebounded by McConnell. McConnell has it to Ernst. Ernst takes it down in the lane. Puts it up. Off the rim. Rebounded by. Goes out of bounds and we'll check it. It'll be an Oriole basketball on the side. In front of the Charlotte cheerleaders. On the other side of the Lakewood Gymnasium. The Orioles with the basketball. They trail 50 by the Lakewood Vikings, 51 to 43, the score. And halfway through the third quarter, the Orioles with a basketball and a foul be called against Bill Barker. And that will be the third against Bill. So the foul trouble is cropping up on the Lakewood Vikings. Hazel with three, Barker with three, Schutz with four, and Schellenbarger with three. in play, scrambling, and it's going to be a foul on Billy Barker again. Now Billy has four, and that's going to send him down. 
we're going to have to pull him out. Uh, Brian Potter is going to come to line up, and it uh, looks like Schultz is going to come in. Scott Schultz, he is coming back in the ballgame. He has four fouls. Barker goes out. Vikings have a, a lot of their height in there right now. O'Mara, Estep, Schultz, and Schellenberger, and Brian Hazel being the uh, point guard. McDonald puts a free throw up and good. McDonald is getting his second shot right now. The eyes to hoop, the shot's up and it's good. And Scott McDonald, he has 19 points for the Charlotte Orioles. He is their leading scorer tonight. And we're going to get a foul against Charlotte. As Eastep was pressured in the corner by two men, foul is called on 52, Mark Wilbur. That is Mark Wilbur's fourth foul against uh, Mark tonight. Team first. That could be an important factor. O'Meara underneath. Puts it up. Two points. So Sean is now up to nine points. Royals with the basketball is tipped out by Lakewood. It'll be a Charlotte basketball out on the end. Standing on the baseline is Jim Kuhn. Officials have called a timeout. Well, both these teams have uh, been shooting the lights out here tonight in more ways than that, literally now. So just about everything has happened in this basketball game tonight. The scoreboard, the scoreboard, uh, scoreboard back, back on. It's blank, and where were we as far as time, Dave? Well, I don't know. But, uh, I think we had about three minutes left in the uh, in the third quarter. Well, that's what they've got to determine now. What to put back on the scoreboard here. Well, this is one reason why you have scorekeepers. Yeah, that's for sure. If you relied on the scoreboard solely, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Well, we're trying to work this situation out, or the officials anyway. We'll take a timeout here in the third quarter. This is Lakewood Viking basketball with the score, Lakewood 53 and Charlotte 47. The third quarter from Lakewood High, the ball in play, the Vikings with the basketball. Schutz has it. The pass up court to Sean O'Mara. O'Mara. Looks around, finds Ryan Hazel. Hazel on top. Looks around, tries to work the offense for the Vikes. To pass the East Step and save back to Hazel down low to Schellenberger now. Turns around, two points for Kevin Schellenberger. Schellenberger up to 20 points now. And the scoreboard has them up to 332. 332. We started at 312 and we've gained 10 seconds now, or 20 seconds. I think they have probably the scoreboard in the wrong mode. They've got it counting up instead of counting down. So they'll have to adjust that. And add the two points to the scoreboard, which they haven't done yet. Could be 50, there we go, 55. To 47, our score. Well, Dale Gardner's an old pro at it, and if anybody can get things straightened out, Dale can do it. And the cheerleaders on Lakewood side are passing out mini basketballs to the fans and de delighting the crowd. The Orioles with the basketball, the, the full-size ball, and they put a shot up. It's no good. O'Mara comes down the floor with the rebound. He over to Hazel. Hazel to East up on their left side of the lane. He step a cross court pass to Ruth, who was one of the Lakewood cheerleaders. Apparently, uh, she wasn't ready for the pass, though. Goes out of bounds. It'll be a Charlotte basketball. They can hit her in her nose or mouth. <laughs> Orioles with the ball. They come up the floor. Yeah, Ernst put the shot up. It's no good. A charging ball against Steve Ernst. That's his third. Team second. Well, so far, it hasn't been his night. 
Barker averaging 28 points a ball game. He's been held in check. Billy Barker's been on him uh, tonight pretty heavy, and uh, he's been held in check. He's only has 10 points. He steps into the inbound, inbound pass. is picked up by Hazel. Hazel up the floor across the timeline. And we're going to get a foul against Scott McConnell. And that's going to be number four on Scott McConnell. Well, he's got 21 points, uh, Paul. One more and he's out if, our, if, if he has four. So that's going to be critical for the Orioles. McConnell's coming out right now for a rest and coming into the ball game. It's Mike Rodeker, and uh, Mike has uh, two points in the contest tonight. Lakewood with the basketball. He step on the left side of the lane. He step looks for Schellenberger down low. Schellenberger tries to get a pass back, but he's called for traveling as he was, in my opinion, knocked down. But I don't get paid to officiate the ball game. Ernst comes up the floor across the half court line. Ernst puts a shot up. Good for two points. Long range. It's a 55-49 ball game. Lakewood still has the lead under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Sean O'Mara with it to Scott Eastep. Eastep on the left side. Eastep lets it get away from him, goes out of bounds. But it's uh, going to be touched before it goes out of bounds by Charlotte Oriole. It'll be Lakewood basketball out on the end. And Scott Schutz has it along the baseline. Schutz. Leggings stacked up. Eastep has it now in play. Pass is taken away by Steve Ernst. He comes up the floor. It's two on one. Underneath the shot put up. He's done. Scrambling around. Clinton at the ball. It's going to be called against the Charlotte Colts for yelling. And uh, there is a new rule this year that the coaches cannot stand up along the sideline. Apparently, it is being used for the first time in my vision anyway so far this year. The coaches, they have tried to restrain them this year. They can't stand up. They can't do anything but sit there on the bench quietly. And apparently, that's what's going to happen right here is a technical foul being called against the Charlotte coach. I think I've seen more technical fouls called against one team than I call, and I have in a long, long time. I think we've seen more tonight than we saw all last season. All last together. season, and maybe uh, any time since uh, we've been uh, broadcasting Lakewood Viking basketball dating back to the 1975-76 campaign. They have been hard hit tonight by technical fouls. The coach is being ejected from the game. The foul is, uh, as far as high school basketball is concerned, and I've been watching high school basketball for a long, long time, too many years to, to mention without embarrassing myself. I think that's the first time I've ever seen a high school coach ejected from a basketball game. I would, I would have to uh, go along with that myself, too. I think that also might be part of this new rule, however, depending on how, how verbal the coach gets. Well, the junior varsity coach evidently is going to uh, take over the coaching duties right now, and uh, the officials are over explaining things to him. So we'll see how much of a disadvantage it is. Probably not a whole lot to the Orioles because, uh, of course, uh, uh, they're going to play the same system throughout. So Sean O'Mara will be going to the line to shoot two. It shots up. It's good. O'Mara has ten now. John's second shot is also good. Now the Vikings will have the basketball out on the side. In front of the scorer's bench, Scott Eastep delivers it in. No. Pass in attempted for Schellenberger. It was knocked out again by the Orioles. We'll try it again. This time it goes over. Taken away by the Orioles this time. As Jerry Visser came down with a pass. Steve Ernst has it down the right side of the lane. Ernst puts it up. No good. A foul will be called against. Go check it. 
Number 42. 32. Scott Eastup, that's the third on Scott. I think Ernst obviously is the key to uh, Sherlock's hopes. Uh, the thing about Ernst, he's like Mark Brown. He likes to drive in heavy traffic and get the shot off in heavy traffic and go for the three-point play. Ernst first is up and good. He has 13 balls, so his point total is getting to be respectable right now. Nurse connects on the second one. Coming into the game now is number 42, Brian Potter for Lakewood. Schellenberger tries to get it in. He's taken away by the Orioles. We're going to get a foul on uh, Sean O'Meara. That'll be the second on Sean. And going to the uh, charity strike will be Jerry Fisher. 57-51 our score right now. And Fisher connects on the first one. He just has seven points. And he's averaging uh, about 19 a ball game this year. This year's second shot, he has to open up the good. 57 53 our score. Lakewood with the lead. And another pass thrown away by the Lakewood Vikings. Well, they're beginning to come apart at the seams right now, Paul. Uh, they want a timeout. Want to recoup here. They had 57 to 49 count, and now the Orioles have come back to make it 57 to 40 or 57 53. And they've led by as much as 51 to 41, a 10 point lead. So they scored uh, six points while the Orioles have come back uh, with 13 right now. So the, the momentum has uh, apparently swung in their direction. Let's see if the Vikings can stem the tide, but. Uh, this hurts to, uh, is somebody to really watch out for because he's a great ball player. He's been held in, in check. But I think that uh, he's the kind of ball player that they're going to go to now in the latter stages of this ball game. And he gets fouled a lot. This is a this is a game, uh, Paul. This is one of the most intense ball games. I've seen or broadcast a long, long time. And we're ready to get back to action now. The Orioles have the basketball. Inbounds. Ernst has it for Charlotte. Up the floor. Right side. Left side. In the lane. Shot put up. By 20 is no good. Rebounded by the Orioles. Another foul against Lakewood. This one will be charged to Schultz. That's his fourth. We had Scott for five earlier, but that's good news. It's only his fourth. The Vikings, uh, Paul, and then some foul trouble in this ball game right now. So Scott Schultz will take a breather here for a while. East step comes in. You have the charity stripe is Mike Wodeker. He'll shoot one and one. Nice to hoop the shots up. It's good. Rodiger's second shot is good. Well, I think we need a basket here, Paul. They need to slow the pace down and regain control of this basketball game. And no more long court passes like that. Over and back, and another turnover. The Orioles will have the basketball out at midcourt, and they can tie the score for the first time in a long time. Up the floor, Steve Ernst, he's the man with the basketball, taken away, Ryan Hazel. But Hazel can't control it, it goes back out of bounds. The Orioles will try it again out on the side in front of the scorer's table. Back into Ernst now. Ernst. 
Comes up. Top of the key. Cross court. Almost taken away by Lakewood. Ernst has the basketball. Right side. Ernst puts it up. No good. Rebound. It'll be a Lakewood basketball. Picked out by Sherlock. Ryan Hazel with it for Lakewood. To Potter. East step has it up. The left side now. Cross the half court line. Hazel has it now on the right side. Hazel takes it down low. It's knocked out by uh, Ernst. Well, well, there's, the basketball. Well, there's 26 seconds left uh, before the uh, end of the period. I think the Vikings need to work it down to that last shot. Let's Omera out of the ball take the last shot. Omera has it in the lane. He turns around, puts it up. Well, I think they did the right thing, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. They did the right thing. 59, 55, 17 seconds to go. Charlotte Ernst puts it up. Two points. Lakewood has the basketball. And a foul will be called against Steve Burns. Fourth fourth. Well, the Orioles have really got some foul problems, too. Uh... And Lakewood not in the bonus yet, so they'll get the ball out on the side. This press by Charlotte's really bothering the Vikings. Ball in play. O'Mara puts it up from long range. Rebounded by... Let's see. Scramble on the floor. The Orioles come up with it at the buzzer. Well, they almost got a technical... Uh... Mike Rodeker didn't Rodeker. like that and right. slammed the ball on the floor. Yeah. I think some officials would call a technical on that. Maybe they figured they'd call enough technical. Well, they would call their allotment for the year, they yeah. think, maybe. And, well, that's the way the third quarter is going to end with the Vikings with a two-point lead. 59-57. Back with the fourth and final quarter after this. <laughs> Fourth quarter action, Dave Hess and Paul Bellinger all set to go here. Dave Hess going to play by play in the final eight minutes. The Lakewood Vikings up 59 to 57, so hang on here. They've led uh, most of the way in this ballgame, but Charlotte has come back strong in the last three or four minutes. And it turns with the basketball for the Orioles, trying to tie it, puts the shot up in his hand. And he has how many, Paul, right now? You've got him down for 18. We've got a tie score of 59 to 59, and so the Lakewood Vikings 51 to 41 lead, 10 point bulge. Has evaporated as 59 all right now. A foul call against uh, Vischer. He's got three. And Mr. Ernst is, uh, is really going to work right now for the Charlotte Orioles. An awful lot of. Uh, Heat out on the floor, temper-wise. The intensity hit is really something here tonight. Sean O'Meara is at the line. And Sean has 13 points. He misses. And rebound taken off by the Orioles. Stonser got the rebound. And here comes Ernst. They can take the lead for the first time in a long, a long time. The Orioles, undefeated, 6-0, rated number 6 by the Detroit News in the Class B ranks in the state of Michigan, number 10 in the AP. Rated with Okemos as the two prime contenders for the title in the Capitol Circuit, and they've had all they can handle here tonight against the Lakewood Vikings as Ernst goes for the basket in a lot of traffic. There's a block knocked away from him. And... Uh, Technical call against the uh, Charlotte bench. I think it's against one of the ball players. Well, how many technicals have we had called against Charlotte tonight? This was against uh, one of the ball players on the bench. There's a collision out there between a couple of the Vikings and. Uh, Evidently, one of the ball players down there said something, and the officials picked it up in a marker at the line, trying to put the Vikings on top.
He missed two. Vikings are going to get it out of bounds. You can hear the Scarlet fans in the background trying to rattle Billy Barker. It's Ryan Hazel is going to uh, work it in right in front of the Scarlet table. High feed, uh, loose ball picked up by the Vikings. Over to Ryan Hazel, he puts the shot up. It's good! It's 61 to 59. The Vikings on top with Ryan Hazel's first basket of the night. Ernst drives, shot doesn't go. Fisher underneath, pumps it up, misses. Loose ball. It's O'Mara. Over to Ryan Hazel. The Vikings with the ball. Billy Barker across the line. Stops, loses the ball, picked off. By Gonser, up the floor comes Ernst. Ernst now goes to his left. He's got 18 points in the ball game, averaging 28. Over the left side, the shot put up a high looping one hander. It fails to connect, and it's uh, Wilbur going up. His shot is good. Preston Kuhn. Kuhn scored. 61 all. Todd Peterson took the shot for Shalott, and then uh, Kuhn came in and got the rebound and put it in, and he's up at the line. They can put the Orioles ahead for the first time in a long, long time. We've got 6.24 left in this tour. Free throw misses. Loose ball. Orioles have the basketball. With Ernst out in front, he goes, stops. He wanted the shot, but he elected to feed off on the right side to Kuhn. Now he goes to the left-handed dribble, top of the circle, watched closely by Hazel. Loose ball, this year has it underneath, puts it off the glass and hole. He has eight. Rickwood now, the drive by East Step, stops, fade away, shot in. 63 all. 5.53 to go, what a ball game. 63 all. We've got a barn burner here, the Lakewood Vikings and the Charlotte Orioles putting on a tremendous show before a large Tuesday night crowd at the Lakewood High School Gymnasium. There's Steve Ertz, one of the top players around with the basketball. He could be All-State this year. He's come on strong in the last couple of quarters of this basketball game as the Charlotte Orioles. Rudiker with the basketball back over the right side. As Ernst goes over to Kuhn to feed down the shot uh, blocked by Schellenbarger. But a foul call against uh, Schellenbarger. Mark Wilbur is going to the line. The Vikings have now four of their starters with four fouls each. Barker, Hazel, Sucks, and Schellenbarger. Well, Wilbur has a chance to put him up by two. The first three throws up, and it's good. So the Orioles at the east end of the floor at the free throw line. Wilbur. Kansas. And so it's a 65 to 63 lead for Charlotte as we're down to five minutes and ten seconds to go. Bill Barker, boss pass to Hazel. Hazel underneath to O'Mara. O'Mara off the glass, doesn't go. Gets the rebound and he's hammered underneath. Wodaker may be the uh, culprit at that time. We'll get a confirmation on it. It is. Rodacher committing the personal foul, 65 to 63. And O'Mara's at the line. He's got 13 points. He's got two free throws. The free throws up, and it's in and out. The Vikings slumping here late in the ball game, down 65 to 63. McConnell who has uh, 21 points to lead all scores. Back in the lineup. Next one uh, fails to connect. So the Vikings in bad shape right here. They're trailing 65 to 63, but they're in a scoring slump. And it's Ernst with the basketball over to McConnell. Ernst out in front, goes to his drive. Gives it over to Kuhn, back to Ernst. 
Coon dishes it back out to Ernst. Ernst left-handed dribble out in front. Double team gets it back over to Coon. Cross court pass down to McConnell. Back out to Ernst. Ernst now goes to his left, running his ball club. Flips it back out to McConnell. Gets the return pass. Crosses it over to Coon. Cross court pass to McConnell. Back over to Ernst. They're running some time off the clock, looking for the open shot. The forward spread wide apart along the baseline there. Cutting in his Fisher. Gets the pass back out to McConnell. Now to Ernst. Ernst. Ernst with the ball. Bouncer over to Kuhn. Now to Ernst. Speeds underneath now. The shot up. And uh, knocked out by the left football team. Wilbur take, trying to get the shot off. In front of the hoop about six feet out. Batted away by the Vikings. And Kuhn is going to work it in. Kuhn back out to Ernst. Ernst. Between the rings right now. Goes to his left. Looks for the opening. Triple team that time. Gets the pass back out to McConnell. Kuhn. Goes over to McConnell. Left corner now to Vischer. Back out to McConnell to Ernst. Ernst works it out in front. We're down to 353. Ernst now goes to his right. Bounce pass. Drive the shot put up by Wilbur. No good. The rebound taken off by the Vikings. Who can tie it up here is Bill Barker. Flips it over to Eastep. The Vikings hoping to rebound here. Billy Barker. Right wing to Eastep. Bill Barker. Pass. Romero almost loses it. Retrieved by Billy Barker out in front. Billy Barker. Over the left side. Ryan Hazel. High looping rainbow shot. And on the rebound, it's McConnell. And a foul. Foul against the Vikings. Scott Eastem charged with his fourth foul. And McConnell who was a heavy scorer in the early going in this basketball game when Ernst was uh, held in check. Goes to the line, he has 21 points. Scott McConnell. Scott McConnell getting the first one. That makes it 60-60-63. Next one, no good. The rebound taken off by O'Mara. So McConnell with 22 points. The Lakewood Vikings with the ball. They can uh, come within one. Billy Barker wants a timeout. So it's 66 to 63. The Lakewood Vikings trailing the Charlotte Orioles after leading most of this ball game. We've got 310 remaining. Paul, what a ball game. Quite a ball game. Quite a ball game. 60-63, Charlotte in the lead. I'm at the at a new statistic tonight for the post-game wrap-up, and that's the uh, lead changes in the ball game. And the, uh, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the technical fouls, but that's almost a world-breaker against one ball club, the Charlotte Orioles. Well, next, uh, this coming Friday night, the fans should be out in force here as the Lakewood Vikings are host to the Eaton Rapids Greyhounds. The Lakewood Vikings hoping to get back at the Eaton Rapids for two losses last year. Greyhounds had an excellent ball club. They've lost uh, some key ball players to uh, graduation. And, uh, Paul, I think we're going to be on hand for that broadcast this Friday night. We'll be on hand live Friday night, beginning at uh, around 7.50. Right here. Game I'm sure you'll be listening to Thursday night, Dave, is Michigan State versus Purdue, live from Jenison Fieldhouse. That yeah. should be a barn burner. You can hear Spartan basketball this season right here on WBCH. Bob Sherman at the mic, and I think uh, Bob Sherman has to be one of the top play-by-play men in the country. Billy Barker with the ball on the inbound pass. The Vikings need a basket here. There's Ryan Hazel. Deep in the left side. Looks underneath. He's got to get rid of it. Gives it over to Eastep, who pumps and pans it. Scott Eastep pans it. And Scott has how many so far, Paul? Around He's eight. got him down for 12. 12 points. He's played uh, very well off, off the bench, 66 to 65. We're down to 244, so this is going down to the wire. The Charlotte Orioles uh, taking their time. McConnell... If they get the opening, they'll take the shot. They're spreading things out. They lose the ball out, but knocked out by Billy Barker. So Ernst, uh, three-time All-League selection. 
Mid-Michigan B one year as a sophomore, last two years in the Capitol Circuit. Drives to left corner, works it back out in front to Kuhn. Kuhn goes to Ernst. Ernst has the opening, puts a shot up, misses, and we have a violation in the lane against the Lakewood Vikings. So Ernst, uh, Ernst had the good shot. That's going to be all for Ryan Hazel. Ryan Hazel. He, finish, he finishes with three points. And Ernst is going to the line. So Ryan Hazel uh, hustled all the way, played a fine ball game here tonight. And it's Mr. Ernst in the line, and that's somebody you don't want to see up there. Free throw's good. And he's got, what, 19 so far, Paul? You got him for 19. And so he can move into the 20-point column right now. And he does. So Schellenbarger gives it over to Billy Barker, 68-65, to 65, the Vikings. Barker with the ball. Barker drives. Fadeaway jumper. Good. Billy Barker moves into double figure range in the scoring. 68 to 67 right now. As Ernst with the ball. Drives. Underneath. Loose ball. Picked up by O'Mara. Now we've got a minute and 59. Lakeland can take the lead. This ball game not for the faint of heart. There's shut. There's the ball. Guarded by Ernst. Back out in front to Billy Barker. Billy Barker near the midcourt line. Goes over to Schutz. Schutz has got to get it off here to East step, East step. Passes back out in front to Schutz. That was dangerous, but he got rid of it. To Billy Barker, we're down to a minute and 34. Well, the Vikings, I don't think, plan on holding it the rest of the way. Bad pass by East step out of bounds. They're looking for the good shot. They weren't expecting to run time off for that last shot, I'm sure. But the Orioles have it back now, and they're in a position where, with a 68-67 to 67 lead, they can run some time off and hope for a foul as Ernst drives, works it over to Bishop. This is a good, good uh, ball club in handling the basketball. As Ernst drives, a lot of traffic feeds underneath. Beautiful feed. What a key basket. 70-67 as he got that pass from Ernst. Now the Vikings have to come down the floor and score quickly. Oh, well, for Steve Ernst. And Ernst just dished the ball off to Wilbur to expand that Oriole lead to 70 to 67. And then he came back with the personal foul. And so the Vikings can cut it to one here if they can make good in this one on one situation. 102 left to go in the ball game. This is high school basketball at its best, believe you me. There's Billy Barker. Ready to go. Good. Is that uh, about 12, Paul? Correct. 70 to 68. Billy Barker now. He cut it to one. And if he does, hang on. He lets it go. It's good. Billy Barker scores two free throws, and that makes it 70 to 69. They're slow and ringing up that 69th point for Lakewood. Ernst is out of the ball game with five personal fouls for Sherlock. McConnell's going to do a lot of the work right now, and he's had a great ball game. We're down under a minute. The Vikings may be forced to foul. Over to Vischer. Sherlock looking for a foul here. They're just working around out in front right now. As a Coon has it in the foul call. Well done, Potter. Ryan Potter. He just came in for the first time. I think probably it's a, it's a good foul on Potter's part. Coon goes to the line. He has, uh, doesn't have too many points in the ballgame, Paul. How many have you got? We've got him for six and two of those yeah. coming from the line. <laughs> So that makes it 71 to 69. 
So Kuhn with just seven points, but uh, boy, they've been key ones. That was good. Eight points, a three-point lead for Shalad as Bill Barker comes up the floor, 72 to 69. The Orioles on top, 33 seconds to go. O'Meara spins around, Kansas. 72 to 71, Shalad, 24 seconds. The Orioles have the basketball as McConnell brings the ball up the floor. They're just working time off the clock right now. This year to McConnell and uh, a foul foul is Bill Barker and that'll be a hit for Billy. And the Orioles are celebrating on that foul on Billy Barker. Billy ends the game with 13 points tonight. And McConnell's going to go to the line with 22 points, a 72 to 71 lead, and so this is likely the ball game right here. Kelly Cross comes in to replace Bill Barker for Lakewood. Well, Billy Barker, Paul, did the right thing. He had to foul. With 11 seconds to go, that gives Lakewood time enough to go down the floor and, and do something, but McConnell's at the line, and the free throw is no good. So hang on here. The Vikings will get the ball back here with a chance to at least tie. And maybe to win. Schellenberger gets the rebound and he's fouled. The panel missed. That's five. Oh, the panel. And the panel's out. And we still have 11 seconds to go. I'm surprised they didn't run off at least one second on the clock. 11 seconds to go. And how would you like to be Schellenbarger out there with all this pressure on you? Well, this, this is very likely the ball game right here. And so that calls a timeout. They want to Kevin think about it a while. They want Kevin to think things over here. And if we've got 11 seconds to go. And so this is probably the ball game right here. It's all up to uh, Kevin Schellenbarger. He's got to hit the first one. That would tie it up. If he doesn't, the Orioles are likely to get it back. And they would probably be fouled. Each team has uh, one timeout left, according to the announcer. I thought this is one of the most, I've said it many, many times in, during the ball game tonight. This is one of the most heated, intense high school basketball games that I have ever seen played. It's uh, of the many ball games that I've had the privilege of broadcasting for the Lakewood Vikings over the past uh, 11 campaigns. This rates is one of the outstanding ball games. And I think our listeners out there can, uh, can well, tell what the feeling is like in this gymnasium fan, especially if they listen to it. On stereo, and uh, I'd advise That's them to put on their head. If they put on their headsets, if they got them at home, it'll be just like being here. <laughs> we promoted the fact all week it's not only be a great basketball game, but a stereo broadcast, a great stereo broadcast, and it's lived up to both of that tonight. Shellenberg is there. Oh, it doesn't go. He misses, and a foul call on Brian Potter. Now we have ten seconds left. Would you say, Paul, that this would be a stereotype ball game? <laughs> I would say that. It's a great one. Uh, it's not a stereotype ball game. You just don't see games like this very often. And Mark Wilbur's at the line, and he hasn't scored very much, but uh, he might be in double figures, Paul. He's, he's got 10 right now. He's got 11 now. 73 to 71. He can ice it here. Well, he can, I think, Paul. They'll just lay back and let the Vikings come down the floor with 10 seconds left to go. He makes good on the second one. Bad pass. Charlotte's got the ball back. A feet underneath. Uh, back out in front. They'll just run time off. We've got two seconds left to go. One second. It's over. And the Charlotte Orioles 
Rogers has come from behind to knock off. They look like they've just won the league championship. Or the state championship. The Lakewood Vikings played a great ball game tonight. They've got nothing to be ashamed of. The Lakewood Vikings, I think, proved to everybody here tonight that they are a pretty good basketball team. And while the, the loss has to be a, a heartbreaking one to the Lakewood Vikings uh, tonight, this ball game should uh, give them a lot of confidence. Jerry Ernst is back out on the floor. He was ejected from the ball game by the officials, but he's back up to uh, on the floor now to join in the celebration of the Charlotte Oil come from behind the three to preserve their undefeated season and their ranking uh, in the state. Uh, outstanding ball club this year, life team, but the Lakewood Vikings, I think, uh, should come out of this ball game tonight while disappointed at the loss, but feeling they're pretty good about themselves because they proved that they can play with a team that is one of the better teams around, a team rated number six by the Detroit News, a team rated number ten by the AP, and uh, they've uh, averaged even this ball game, averaging, I think, 94 points a ball game. They wound up with 74 tonight, which is a high total for a high school basketball team, but the Lakewood Vikings wound up with 71. And the fans tonight really got their money's worth here at the Lakewood High School Gymnasium. Uh, Kevin Schellenbarger had an opportunity to win the ball game with the Vikings down 72 to 71, but he just couldn't connect in that one-to-one -one situation. And the Orioles got the ball, and uh, they went at 74 to 71. But you can't call Kevin Schellenbarger because he played one whale well of a ball game uh, here tonight, as all the Lakewood Vikings did. Just a tremendous basketball game, and this is one of those for a lot of games you forget about. They're, they remain a blur in your memory, but this ball game will stand out as one of the best ball games ever played here at the Lakewood Vikings in four. Paul, what do you have for the fans? Okay, Dave, well, before we get to our stats tonight, we're going to take this time off for this final message. This is Lakewood Viking basketball. Crispy bacon, hot buttered toast, and eggs the way you like them. All for 99 cents. Visit your nearby Rhodes, home of the 99 cent breakfast special. Oh, see, oh, see. Rodeo's to the rescue. Oh, yeah. When you believe in people, the world gets around. We believe in people, we believe in you. Hastings Savings and Loan puts your best interest where it counts most, in your account. Make your dreams come true with weekly savings at Hastings Savings and Loan with branch offices in Lake Odessa. Hastings Savings and Loan. When it comes to your home, you want the best. For the bust and floor coverings, drapes, countertops, and accessories, see the selection of Brown's Custom Interiors, located on Industrial Park Drive in Hastings. Brown's Custom Interiors, 25 years of quality and service to this area. with the post-game show from Lakewood High School tonight. Looking at the stats, first of all, for Charlotte, taking scoring honors in the game tonight is Scott McConnell. He has 22 points for the Charlotte Orioles. He is followed by 20 points from Steve Ernst. 12 points from Mark Wilbur tonight. 8 points from Jerry Fisher. Jim Kuhn added 8 points to Charlotte's total, along with Mike Rodaker, who had 4 points in the contest tonight. The Lakewood Vikings, their leading scorer, Kevin Schellenbarger, 20 points tonight for Kevin. Fine effort from Sean O'Mara for 15 points tonight. 13 from Bill Barker. Scott Eastep in a fine effort off the bench with 12 points. 8 points from Scott Schutz and 3 from Ryan Hazel in tonight's contest. Again, the final score of the varsity game, 74-71. Charlotte coming out on top. And in tonight's junior varsity game, the Lakewood JV is winning that one, 68 264. Here's Dave with the final comments. Well, a large crowd filing out of the gymnasium tonight. This was a, a very big basketball crowd, not only for Tuesday night, but I would say uh, for any night for high school basketball. And we haven't seen a crowd like this in a long, long time, maybe uh, since the uh, Jeff Heidi, Larry Lubitz era here at Lakewood High School when they reeled off four consecutive Tri-River 
a league championship. The Lakewood Vikings led most of the way, but they were behind when it counted the most at the end of the ball game, 74 to 71. The Vikings uh, took a 21 to 19 uh, first quarter lead, outscored Charlotte in the second quarter, 24 to 18 to lead by a 43 to uh, 37 count. At halftime, Charlotte came back in the third quarter to outscore the Lakewood Vikings. They cut the Viking lead to 59 to 57 at the end of the third quarter, and they outgunned Lakewood by a 70 to 12 count in the fourth stanza to win this ball game, 74 to 71. The Vikings had a chance with 11 seconds left in the ball game to pull it out, trailing 72 to 71. Kevin Schellenbarger went to the line with a one and one situation, but he missed on the front end of the free throw. The Orioles grabbed the rebound. And that was the ball game right there. They wound up winning this one, uh, 74 to <coughs> 71. The noise in the gymnasium tonight, as you could tell by listening to this ball game on the radio, was at a feverish uh, pitch. You could tell right away before the tip off of this ball game that this is going to be something special here tonight. You could tell just uh, from the reaction of the fans, the size of the crowd, and everything. Uh, the people here were really looking forward to, to this ball game, and the Orioles brought a very large contingent over from Charlotte that really were keyed up. They must be very, very excited about this basketball team over in Oriole Land. Well, uh, that's it as far as this ball game is concerned. 74 to 71, a great ball game, and uh, this Friday night we're going to be back again doing Lakewood Viking basketball, a live broadcast on D WBCH. Uh, the Lakewood Vikings taking on the Eaton Rapids Greyhounds and another Capital uh, Circuit Affair, and I hope that uh, you can listen to us broadcast that one for you if you can't make it out to the Lakewood High School Gymnasium uh, in person. Again, uh, airtime Paul will be in the vicinity a little bit before 8 o'clock. About 10 to 8 on, on Friday night for that one, so uh, we hope that you'll be on hand for it. Oh, Michigan State basketball Thursday night. Right, Bob Sherman at the microphone, and if you haven't heard Bob Sher Sherman broadcast basketball of any kind, you've really uh, missed out on uh, on something. He's an outstanding uh, uh, broadcaster indeed. Uh, Michigan State Spartans taking on those very t rough and tough Purdue Boilermakers, Boilermakers coached by Gene Cady. Uh, they've been a powerhouse so far this season, a definite contender for a Big Ten uh, title honor. So Michigan State basketball on Thursday, Lakewood Viking basketball coming up for you again on Friday. Well, once again, the final score of the Lakewood Vikings come out short in a great ball game here tonight to the very strong, very powerful, highly rated Charlotte Orioles. Final score, Charlotte 74, Lakewood Vikings 71. This is Dave Hess on behalf of Paul Ballinger thanking you so much for listening to our broadcast tonight. Bye, everybody. Tonight's Lakewood Vikings basketball action has been a presentation of WBCH Sports and was brought to you by the members of the Sportscasters Club, including Rody's Restaurants. It's Rody's to the Rescue. Hastings Savings and Loan. We believe in people. We believe in you. Brown's Custom Interiors. 25 years of quality and service to this area. The National Bank of Hastings with 24-hour-a-day ATM banking. Tonight's game was also brought to you in part by McDonald's of Hastings. Try the new McDLT. Hastings Fiberglass, a high school Horse Booster, Hastings City Bank, get nationwide banking with the connection. Flex Fab Incorporated, proud and supportive of our youth. And Guilty Lake Tavern for good food and good times. You're invited to join us Thursday night at 7.30 for Michigan State Spartan Big Ten Basketball. The Spartans entertain Purdue. Friday night, you'll hear more high school basketball. Lakewood versus Eaton Rapids. Friday night is 7.50 here on your good sports connection. WBCA Jeff Allen. WBCHFM Hastings, it's 1227. Here's the updated National Weather Service forecast for the Stereo 100 listening area. Mostly clear and cold overnight with lows from 0 to 10 below. And uh, Mike Ayers indicated earlier that uh, could get uh, lower than that in uh, uh, scattered spots. Uh, the current temperature here at the WBCH studios is one degree above zero. Light northwesterly winds overnight, uh, shifting to the southwest by morning. Tomorrow, slightly warmer, mostly sunny day with highs around 20 degrees. Southwest winds increasing to 10 to 20 miles an hour. Partly cloudy tomorrow evening and uh, much warmer than tonight. Lows tomorrow night, 15 to 20. And by Thursday, the uh, highs will...